So I picked up a completely wrecked Tesla Model X. Not to fix it, not to drive it, but take the battery out and use it for something way more exciting. So right now it doesn't even turn on and we had to push it into the garage by hand. And today we're moving the biggest and most important part of the car, the battery. This weighs over 1400 pounds and it holds a massive amount of energy. So this does have to be handled the right way. Thankfully, we've got somebody here today that's gonna help us that's done this many times before. So we have Peter, the EV parts guy, and he's actually gonna be guiding us step by step. This is all gonna be done kind of in my driveway, in my garage, so you can do it too, just follow along. Let's get to it. We're just getting into the build, but getting the battery out is a huge milestone. So before we remove anything, we gotta get the car prepped properly. The car and a lot of the systems actually wake up on a regular 12 volt battery and this battery is dead. There's an app that connects with the Tesla vehicle that'll actually help us determine the cell voltages and make sure everything's safe to disconnect. So Peter, do you want to introduce yourself real quick since we're uh, doing all this together? Hi guys, Peter from EV Parts Guy. Probably heard we've worked with Jeremy a bunch before. Had a fun opportunity today to actually come out to his shop and actually work with him. So he's been looking for a specific um, 100 battery, which we've found and believe it or not, we're lucky enough to find one in this town. So we're gonna to work together and show you guys how to disassemble it. Okay, great. So now you're talking about the uh, so Scan My Tesla app. Scan My Tesla. So it's working away here, connecting battery voltage. So now it's looking away here and we can actually look at the BMS module. Oh, this is good news. What this guy does, the the big number we're looking for here is the delta. So it's got 12 millivolt delta. So that's really that, good. Just go pretty good. Some of the things we needed to do, we had to remove the safety disconnect for the high voltage battery and wait for everything to power all the way down. Peter's got some great tools to do this in his shop and he does this all the time. So if you need kind of EV parts, I'll leave a link to his website in the video description below. There we go. You're good, you're good. If you go straight, you're good. Oh my goodness, go, 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 go. All right, now you can go left. Today we're just gonna be doing this in my driveway, in my garage, anything that anybody can do. Okay, stop here. Go on brakes, yep. With that said, the battery pack is huge. It basically covers the entire floor of the vehicle and weighs about 1,400 pounds. So we gotta get this car up on jack sand safely and then we'll get to actually removing some of the fasteners that hold the battery in place. We did multiple jack stands and floor jack maneuvers so we wouldn't tip too much and ensure that the jack stands were always in place while jacking. Then we began removing the splash guards to access the bolts that hold onto the battery pack. Okay, we now have everything fairly secure on jack stands. Peter's gonna show us some of the bolts and things that are important to this process. Hey guys, so we're looking at how this all fits together. We have basically a row of bolts around the perimeter, which are 10 millimeter bolts. And then on the inside, up into the floor pan, there's some eight long eight millimeters that go right through the pack. They're at um, E12 torque, bit of a special thing, but there's about, I think a dozen of those plus. The row of four here, there's two rows at the front and oh, sorry, at the back and at the front. So we're gonna pull those out now. Well, it's up on jack safely. We will then get something under it. That we're gonna lower it down on. The other thing under these bolts is a plastic strip along here, which hides the bolts. It's basically for protecting the bolts and stopping them filling up with dirt, etc. Another interesting thing while we're here, the high voltage fuse cover on these later pack is from the bottom. Cool. Okay, so those are all the ones underneath and then you've got yeah, perimeter, yeah. perimeter ones. So now we're in. Yeah. All the fasteners are off. Well, the back, we're just gonna gently bring it down a little at a time. Yeah, the back, it goes slow. So we got the back lowered. Yep. Just like try and keep it as even as we can. So now we've got the rapid neck connector up the front here. So watch it misses the stands. Just 
Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, slow, whoa, whoa. We're, we're just close to the jack now. Yeah, we're clear. Oof, we hit. Jack, <laughs> back. I thought we were past it, I guess not. Oh, just the last wheel. Dang it. All the way? So I'll tell you, Peter makes it look easy. He's obviously done this several times before. Lots of bolts all around the outside, and then these are the ones that were in the middle. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah, it's really cool. So Believe it or not, a lot of the connections are just kind of a quick disconnect. So the coolant lines, they just separate. Uh, same thing with the high voltage terminal, they just separate, and you don't need to kind of do any fasteners or things there. Do you need to take out that uh, high voltage fuse in the back, but everything else just drops down. For today's sponsor, we have Last Fit Air dual cylinder tire inflator. So this is the last fit TK1. It is a portable air compressor and tire inflator. All right, it's got my favorite type where it's just a push and twist and you're there, boom, twist. It's even got a satisfying click. It's also got kind of a 12 volt outlet cord as well as kind of a typical USB charger. So let's go blow some stuff up. It goes up to 150 PSI and it has a 12 amp hour battery. It has ultra fast pumping with dual cylinder technology, which lets you inflate up to five times faster. That's so fast. A large battery will let you do up to say 12 car tires or 42 road bike tires. One of my favorite features is the gauge. So basically whatever pressure is at, it'll tell you right there. It also has an auto stop feature. So you don't have to worry about it. Just set it, push start, it'll go all the way to the end. So this is the Toyota truck. I have not ever tested what the tire pressure is. So we're gonna see what it is and see what we need to go to. Okay, so we are at 22. Shuts off on its own. That's about a minute or so and big old truck tire. We've got a couple balls here. Again, super flat. It's so fast. Okay, we'll see about this one. There we go. That is so fast. I'm a big proponent of the portable air compressor. I feel like it's a must in emergency situations. So if you need one for your car, I'll leave a link in the video description below. Assuming you, you had to undo these ones? No, these are the rapid, what they call the rapid make connectors. Okay, so you didn't have to do anything. They just drop down and they push back up and so there's low voltage connectors. So they're, they're, not, they're not clips, they're just push in. Yeah, they just push in. They're all sprung loaded to their line. And at the front is the rapid make for the coolant fittings. So it's already full of coolant. So, and you didn't have to do anything there, because again, just wrap it, just yeah, push like, in and out. Just like an airline fitting. So just pull the plastic off. So is that to seal it? Uh, that's to seal the water. And then what's, just double seal it, or what's? So the strip in the middle. Yep, actually all of them. Oh, every single bolt, got it. Yeah. I'll be here for a while. All right, I've seen this on the internet, but never at my shop. So basically you got, uh, looks like cooling in and out. So these are those connectors. We'll see if we can uh, steal some of those. Looks all shiny and new.
5,000 volts. This is 12,000 volts. So what's the procedure? Take off all the orange caps? Yep. Once we got all the bus bars off, then it's no longer a high voltage system. Each individual module is only about 24 volts. I'm just surprised because I would think if it's cell taps, you'd think they'd spark every time you You said you've got a special tool to get those off. It's a tool that everyone probably needs. Yeah. Now uh, we're going to drain it. So basically the plan is we've got a tube here to drain into a bucket. We're just going to do like five PSI or something through here to get all the coolant out. So we'll do that uh, for all the modules. Keep taking them out. Cool. All right, so we've got everything unbolted here, all the bus bars. We are just about halfway through taking a quick break. We're just uh, cutting the cooling lines here. So there's kind of four cooling lines and uh, kind of prying it out. It's just hard. They're all very snug. That's what it's looking like. All right, we've got this all taken apart. Thanks to Peter. Yeah. It's quite the uh, process, but uh, got them all here and uh, got all the connectors off. I don't think we broke any. We ended up putting the battery shell back on the car as it will be transferred to Peter's shop for further disassembly. Peter is out of here. We got this all done in what? Uh, like probably six hours probably. Yeah, that, that may be an hour for lunch with that. But uh, so yeah. Peter's the one to go to for all this sort of stuff. So if you got anything EV related, Tesla related, uh, I'll put a link in the video description to where to find his stuff. Okay, thanks guys. Thanks Jeremy again for having us. And uh, if you need looking for parts, come to us. We can help you. We love it. Thank you. We did it all in an afternoon. So we got the car in on jack stands, got the whole battery box disconnected, dropped down, pulled out, and all the modules out. That gets us one step closer to getting these batteries into a different build, which is much more exciting. So stay tuned. We got more coming for you. Thanks for tuning in. See you next time. We did it. Let's see, what do I want to say?